The global aviation industry has experienced severe turbulence in the past few years and has been rushing to recover promptly in this year's post-pandemic era. Now that the aviation industry has stably flown through this storm, there's much to expect from the industry in the next decade. Travelling this year has been incredibly disappointing and hectic for thousands of passengers. They are often met with unexpected and sudden flight cancellations, delays and misplaced and lost baggage. Rebooking has also become equally stressful for passengers as they'll subsequently be dealt with limited next flight out options. But how has air travel become so chaotic this year? The answer lies in a prolonged problem as the aviation industry is more short-staffed than ever, an unfortunate consequence of the massive layoffs conducted during the pandemic. The staffing shortages have affected nearly every aspect of the industry, ranging from ground staff, airline and airport personnel, and even air traffic controllers. However, the issue of pilot shortage is becoming more prominent than ever, with airlines such as United Airlines starting their own flight academy as a solution. And if a pilot crunch wasn't significant enough, fatigue, poor pay rates and overscheduling have also become severe pairing concerns. As the aviation industry continues to evolve, the demand will continue to outpace the growth of pilots. On that topic, there's been an ongoing heated debate over single pilot operations in commercial aviation. Still, it's doubtful that such practices will ever be adopted by airlines, even if it does reduce operating expenses and could help with the pilot shortage issue. Although new generation aircraft technology has advanced to sophisticated levels of automation, there is still too much at risk. The risks of being over-reliant on technology are something that has bitten the industry many times and cost an unfortunate amount of innocent lives. There's also the risk of the single pilot suddenly becoming incapacitated, or how having just one person operating the flight deck increases the risk of terrorists becoming more daring to commit crimes. As attractive as the concept of single pilot operations may be for the pilot shortage issue, such ideas should only be implemented if the current level of safety is not compromised in any way and instead should be enhanced. And security is one of the most notable factors in the aviation industry, which is why single pilot operations for commercial aviation will not happen in the next decade. The tech world has also been quickly improving and gaining space, so technology adoption has always been inevitable for the future. The pandemic certainly sped things up with an increase in self-service platforms and electronic boarding systems. Thanks to the responses on CETA's latest IT Passenger Insights report of travellers from 27 countries representing 85% of the total passenger traffic, the report highlights how technology is not just benefiting passengers by enabling a smoother journey, but is also positively impacting travellers' sentiment toward flying. The trend will continue into the next decade when the evolution of passenger services becomes a self-operation with biometrics and cloud technology whereby passengers will perform all services till boarding on their own. The airport can still track every movement, like the Star Alliance initiative that aims to have at least 50% of its carriers using biometrics by 2025. In addition to the member airlines, Star Alliance also hopes the four European airports already participating in its biometrics program will add additional touchpoints and increase the number of participating airports. Some airlines have already started implementing electronic flight bags for their pilots. However, the trend is sure to become more popular as the technology evolves, allowing pilots to better perform basic flight planning calculations with a greater variety of digital documentation. Artificial intelligence could also be implemented in commercial aircraft flight decks to aid pilots in situational awareness or precision control. Still, it'll not be kicking pilots out of the flight deck. Considering net-zero emissions by 2050, adopting sustainable aviation fuels and green aircraft technology will begin to penetrate deeper into the market. New engine core concepts and retrofitted or blended wing designs are also expected to come out within the next decade as they bring higher fuel efficiency benefits compared to changing the aircraft design, aerodynamics or systems. Still, on the sustainable subject, the timeline for electric aircraft in commercial aviation might be in the late infancy stages. They have already been given the green light to fly. 
Manufacturers such as Archer, Hart Aerospace, and EVE Air Mobility have already received significant orders from major carriers such as United Airlines, Air Canada, and Iceland Air for electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Aircraft and cabin designs from many manufacturers have already been produced, with some already having test flown their prototype aircraft after receiving piloted permits from the relevant authorities. For some manufacturers, their electrical products are likely to take off in 2028 or even earlier if all tests, certifications and the building of infrastructures carry on smoothly. With the speed at which the urban air mobility revolution is going, it's plausible that the manufacturer's estimation will become a reality within the decade. Passengers could be hopping on electric flying aircraft or flying taxis, as they would be called, to get between cities to beat the congested airport and rush hour traffic on the highways. Another change is new small and city-like airports. Let's face it, no one fancies the large crowds and queues at big international airports. Even the smaller regional airports are beginning to get congested as passengers shift towards them in hopes of fewer disruptions. With the progression of urban air mobility expected to further within the next decade, the use of current airports as vertiports for electric aircraft is certainly less feasible in the long run. This is where the trend of smaller, city-like airports worldwide will gain traction to cater to urban air mobility specifically. Essentially, the airport is like its own ecosystem of a multimodal advanced air mobility port. It can and will eventually be built onshore on islands, building rooftops or smaller urban areas, or even offshore where ferries transport passengers from the port to land. Besides being an airport for electric aircraft operations, the smaller airports are likely to house the command, control, cargo and recharging areas. So besides being multimodal, it's also multifunctional. Some of these urban airports are already being constructed within cities, with a few to be completed within the next few years. What once was the critical backbone of domestic and regional air transportation systems has now and will likely continue to become entirely forgotten in its decline. Regional airlines have been under plenty of pressure as the pilot shortage affects them the hardest, especially since pilots would instead sign with a big low-cost carrier or a full-cost carrier for higher salaries. There's also the rising threat of existing and new low-cost carriers and even leisure or hybrid carriers which take up all types of routes to get their share of any market. These airlines also offer relatively competitive cabin products, giving full-cost carriers a serious fight for their profits. In response, the more prominent full-cost carriers have been trying to launch new routes, typically operated through feeder service by the regional carriers. However, full-cost carriers would profit more if they operated these routes alone than by feeding through smaller airlines. As a result, the regional carriers have fewer flights to service. Pretty soon, the increasing cost of operations will outweigh the profits earned from the few services they can offer, forcing several regional carriers to file for bankruptcy and become redundant. When air travel rebounded this year, the demand for leisure routes recovered relatively quickly and airlines quickly provided a growing supply. However, business travel has yet to return to half of the pre-pandemic levels and a decline within the next decade is likely inevitable for various reasons. The most significant is how the pandemic altered how several businesses operate, with remote work becoming increasingly popular to disregard the need for travel. But still, some companies would have travel commitments, which is where the new look of business travel comes in with the rise of leisure travel. Yes, leisure travel is when passengers combine business commitments with non-work itineraries on the same trip to maximize vacation time. Rather than waiting for the long-scheduled summer or winter vacation period, passengers are more likely to book a leisure trip, given the added flexibility where they need not wait till peak seasons to pay fuller airfare prices. The airfare prices in 2023 could be much higher than any business traveller is used to. While airlines face higher costs for every new or upgraded capacity input, fuel impacts them more than other expenditures, as the prices generally account for at least 20 and up to 40% of total input costs. Although it's been forecast by the US Energy Information Administration that prices will fall in the first half of 2023, the tight supply could still drive fuel prices up. Higher fuel prices ultimately lead to higher airfare prices, 
though the changes are likely to vary by region. Routes between Europe and North America are expected to see modest rises of 3.7%, while intra-European flights could see more substantial price rises of at least 6%. North American domestic business fares are expected to witness moderate rises of at least 3.4%. With these airfare price rises and the slow business flights return, the pleasure trend will likely keep growing over the next few years. The likely increasing trend of pleasure travelers goes hand in hand with the possible rising popularity of premium economy cabins. Airlines have gradually started getting rid of their first-class long-haul cabin and business class cabins have become more luxurious to fill in the gaps. Business class has become the new first class, considering the lack of deviation with lie flat beds and privacy screens. Without a business class cabin doing what it was initially designed to address and with a higher price point, this is where the popularity of premium economy will start to increase. Some airlines' premium economy cabins already feature greater reclines and larger entertainment screens besides extra legroom. Some also serve complimentary champagne, reducing the deviation between premium economy and business class. A premium economy airfare would better fit budgets than business class cabins, and the extra legroom over the economy cabin is enough to incentivize passengers. Full-cost carriers, even low-cost carriers, are likely to start investing in premium economy cabins if needed. Although certain lounge access is already available with some airlines, dedicated lounges solely for premium economy passengers will also become a trend in the next decade. Over the past decade, the Asia-Pacific region was forecast to become the quickest growing worldwide regarding airline activity. The region was previously expected to account for 40% of future airline productions, and although the pandemic has slowed the pace down, the numbers have changed to 45%. And while China will remain the most significant market within Asia-Pacific when it reopens, new contenders have entered the playing field. India, the world's third-largest aviation market, is still relatively underpenetrated compared to China. However, this will likely change within the next decade as the Indian aviation industry blossoms. IATA expects 430 million additional air journeys in India by 2040, so the next two decades will see sustained growth for the country. Aircraft manufacturers such as Airbus and Boeing have also become interested in India, especially for supply chain productions of aircraft engines, SAF and even aerospace defence systems. IATA's head of policy analysis, Andrew Matters, said that India's aviation industry could expect a compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, of 5.8% for the next two decades. Around 80 new airports are expected to pop up in India in the next five years to fuel the growing aviation sector. In the last eight years alone, the number of airports in the country has increased from 74 to 141. If all goes according to plan, this number is expected to shoot up to around 220 in the next half a decade. Another likely contender within the region in the next decade is Indonesia. The country is set to become the world's fourth largest aviation market by 2030. It currently boasts more than 30 international and over 200 domestic airports, with the government's plan to open at least five more. Indonesia is also home to Lion Air, the second-largest Southeast Asian low-cost carrier behind Air Asia. What do you think aviation will be like in the next decade? Let us know in the comments. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.